there's this tendency and it's just our limbic system. It's our reptilian brain that thinks somehow that obsessing over the future is somehow going to keep us from danger, keep us from loss, keep us from disappointment, keep us from embarrassing ourselves. I don't care what situation you're in right now. I just want to emphasize that everything is okay right here in this moment as you hear my voice. Welcome to the Introverted Influencer Podcast. I'm your host, Erica Van Slyke. My soul's mission on this planet is to help fellow introverts grow their online influence in a state of feminine flow and ease. While battling the woes of depression, anxiety, and even mom guilt, I've somehow managed to build a six-figure blog without the use of social media and without sacrificing my mental health. If I can do it, you can too. Hello, beautiful. Welcome back to episode 73 of the Introverted Influencer Podcast. So I hope that you are doing well. I guess by the time this comes out, we will be already finished up with eclipse season of September and October. And eclipse season tends to always be a time where there's upheaval. It's sort of like the universe, God is redirecting you. And many times when we go through these seasons, basically things that were not meant for your highest good get somehow taken away from you, shaken out of your life. And the best way to navigate these times is to trust that if you are going through some sort of rejection or loss, know that it is for your highest good and lean into that trust. And with that, I've got to kind of be honest and and say how I've been feeling lately in my own spiritual journey. I go through these times when it just feels like there's so much noise out there and maybe I get a little overstimulated and I take in too much information and then it just starts to all sound the same or it all starts sounding like bullshit and I feel like nobody really knows what they're talking about. It just doesn't resonate. It's just, it, it's funny because I go through these cycles a few times a year and it's hard being a someone who really wants to uplift others with their own message when you get into those moods. But I have to remember to kind of get in a quiet space and recenter. And so I felt like I haven't had a whole lot of encouraging things to say lately. And I'm not going to just blow smoke up people's asses either. Like I have to be myself and vulnerable with what I'm going through in my life. And Lo and behold, I felt compelled to to share a message today. So I'm so thankful for that because I didn't want too much time to go by before I did have a message to share. And I'm so sorry. I've got horrible allergies. So if my voice sounds weird, bear with me because I do feel called today and I don't want this message to kind of get put on the back burner and then I, I don't feel as inspired to share it with you tomorrow. So today's message, first, I have to call myself out because... I kind of forgot about this whole concept of just presence and living really one day at a time and not getting too ahead of myself. And I feel like that's such a basic tenet of mindfulness. And I somehow, it's so crazy. Like the further in this self-development journey you go, you just, you kind of overlook the basics. And so I, I hate to always have to recap what's going on in my life, but I experienced, gosh, this was about a a month ago now, there was a Google algorithm update and it hit me, it took away like 40 to 50, well, 48% of my business. And that had been preceded two years ago. I had lost half of my, almost half of my business from a Pinterest algorithm update. And so within those two years, I had worked my ass off to build my business back stronger than it was before. And there was kind of that trauma of like, oh my God, what if something like that happens again? And sure enough, it it did. It happened again a few weeks ago to me. So I've noticed 
kind of, it's like after this traumatic event, I can see my ego taking me out of the present moment in an effort to kind of self-sustain and, and always be on top and aware and prepared for the next, the next shoe to drop essentially. And I found myself not living in the present moment and not enjoying the present moment because I'm always thinking about either what happened in the past or worrying about if it happens again to me. And I, I think that all of us can, we have the choice to get knocked off of our center and not live mindfully and not live in trust. And it's like by doing that, we are robbing this day, this present moment of joy. We are putting unnecessary anxiety on ourselves if we're thinking about the future And we can kind of get into a state of like depression, thinking our best days are behind us if we get too caught up in the past. Essentially, I'm pretty sure Eckhart Tolle in his book, Power of Now, it's been years since I've read this book, but I want to say the first few chapters even talk about most of our unhappiness, our mental neuroses are due to the fact that we are not living just in the present moment. Because if we if we truly did live in the present moment, we would not experience anxiety and we would not experience depression either. Because right here, right now, everything is good. Everything is fine right now. We're alive. We have food in our bellies. We have clean water to drink, a roof over our head. If you have the ability to listen to this podcast, then I'd say you're doing better than probably 98% of the population because you have access to technology. We can even deny the blessings. I think this is where I'm going to call myself out right now. So I, of course, I'm, I guess, you know, there's some self-pity thinking about, I, you know, the fact that I had worked so hard to rebuild my business and then it gets taken away again. This kind of woe is me. And of course, that's me living in the past, right? And then a blessing does come to me. I shared a few episodes back how new ideas, new opportunities that I never could have done in my own power, in my own logic, my own ability, have I've had miracles bestowed upon me in my life, in my business with a beautiful sponsorship deal that felt very aligned and it's almost over the tasks that I've had to complete for this company. So this brand, and I will share more on that in future episodes, but I just, I didn't want to jinx it. So I haven't really talked about it, but essentially I, while I was thankful for the blessing of receiving a source of income that I couldn't have ever predicted, I didn't really feel comforted by it. I just realized that like, because sponsorships are not, this particular sponsorship is not recurring. So once I've completed everything in the contract, the brand will pay me a generous check And then we'll probably be on our separate ways again. And the burden will then be on me to find another opportunity to supplement what was lost when the Google algorithm took 40% of my business. So I am already thinking, you know, 10 steps ahead, essentially, and stressing myself out and completely taking for granted the blessing that was just given to me. And so we, no matter if you're a blogger going through the same thing I'm going through, because so many of us are, I, I haven't spoken actually to one blogger that's not pissed off at Google. And, you know, whether it it has to do with just you stretching to a new level in your career or in your life, there's this tendency And it's just our limbic system. It's our reptilian brain that thinks somehow that obsessing over the future is somehow going to keep us from danger, keep us from loss, keep us from disappointment, keep us from embarrassing ourselves. I don't, I don't care what situation you're in right now. I, I just want to emphasize that like Everything is okay right here in this moment as you hear my voice. And the message, the download that I received this morning was just that you will have grace for each day as it comes. For a 24-hour period, God will give you enough grace for whatever situation you are facing within that 24-hour period. So stop trying to think a year ahead. Stop trying to think a month ahead, a week ahead, two days ahead. That is not your business. And that was something else that just, as I was putting on my makeup this morning, 
I just kept hearing like, that. that's not your business. It's not your business how you're going to make up for that lost income once this sponsorship deal is over. It's not your business because God's ways are not our ways. God's ways are so much better than our ways. And there's just so much that we can't predict. So why even try to control? And think about all the times where actually just ruminating on something or trying to prepare yourself for something, for a hard situation, the actual thinking and the anticipation of it was like way worse than once you were actually in the moment and you did it. I'll never forget when I stepped into one of my biggest freaking fears in the world was public speaking and it still is. And gosh, it'll be, wow, two years now, I did a a conference and I was a keynote speaker and I knew about this event months and months ahead of time. I'm telling you, I made my life miserable preparing for that. And the longest time I wasn't even doing anything practical to prepare, I was just stressing and having anxiety and seeing myself make a fool of myself on the stage, essentially. (laughs) And then maybe like the other two months were actual like me writing the speech and going over it and rehearsing it. But when I look back, the worst part was actually thinking about it. Once I got there and I got to see all of the women and connect with them and feel their energy and their sincerity and their openness and and welcoming auras, it was like, yeah, I was I was still a little nervous, but my God, just the anticipation of it was way worse. And I would just invite you to go back into your life, get a little introspective, retrospective, And remind yourself of those times where you stressed over something and you tried to prepare yourself, I guess, just more mentally by giving yourself such unnecessary anxiety over something. And then you actually got to that moment in your life where you did have to do the hard thing. And it's like there was this supernatural, just I keep saying grace, but this this ease that came over you, the supernatural power that when you look back, you think, God, I I don't know how I got through that, but I did. And it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I can say that even with the situation that happened two years ago with losing major, major chunk of my business. And there were nights when I tried to, when I got way too ahead of myself and I would just spiral and, and freak out and not be able to sleep. And that didn't help me move through the situation any better. And I'm alive. I'm okay. I actually learned a lot of lessons. So I just, I just want to urge you if you're like me, (laughs) or if you did what I did and you kind of forgot the basics of like, just mindfulness and presence. Because sometimes when you're on that spiritual path, you want like the next, you know, mind blowing kind of revelation. And sometimes it really is just the simple, the simple things. And so this is just your reminder to do your best to just live seriously, minute by minute, like moment by moment, really staying present and and not allowing yourself to, to relive the past or try to prepare yourself for the future. I mean, yeah, we can all have common sense and make good decisions and set our future selves up for success, but sending yourself into like a freaking anxious spiral over something, it's really not doing you any good. And you have no idea what sort of divine intervention awaits you when you will, when you do get to that moment. Like I said, I never could have anticipated kind of the provisions that I have in this moment that were given to me to to help ease the blow of of losing almost half of my business just a month ago. And so I am I'm going to do my best <laughs> to actually use my imagination for good and and have trust and faith in in what's coming to me in the future and know that God is a loving God. The universe is loving. It's always directing us on our highest path, on our highest potential if we're willing to do the work as well. And I know you are because you're listening to this podcast. So you're going to be taken care of. You're going to be okay. And there's a quote, I'm pretty sure Jenna Zo, she is a major figure in um, human design. And I'm pretty sure it's her that says it's either a blessing or a blessing in disguise. So stay in your trust, stay present. Don't get too ahead of yourself. It always somehow works out. I mean, shit, you're here right now. I'm here right now. We're alive. We've all done some dumb things. 
We've all made some mistakes, but God has given us grace and we are blessed enough to see another day. So I just want to send you so much love because it's it's not an easy time to be a human being right now on planet Earth. It's really not. But I don't know. I guess our souls chose it. We're learning. We're growing. We're breaking old patterns. And one day it'll all make sense. <laughs> and there's, you know, there's also a saying, what is it? It's not... It's not over until it's all good. You know, if you believe in a loving God, a loving universe, remind yourself of that fact too. So anyhow, it would mean so much to me if you could give this podcast a five-star review or share it on social media, tag me in it because, you know, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I, I don't force any course or any boot camp or whatever. I don't have a product. I don't, well, I, I am here. If you need me, I do consulting. So there's that, but you don't have to listen to ads. The least you could do is pay it forward by leaving me a review and, and trying to get this out to other people that need to hear it. I'm sending you so much love and I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much for stopping by this week. I make no money from the show. Actually, it costs me money to produce and host. So the best way you can show your support for this passion project of mine is by leaving the show a five-star written review on Apple. Also, if you would like to contribute monetarily to the show, you can leave a tip in my digital tip jar, which I have the link in the show notes. You can always share it with a friend who you think could benefit from the message or even better, you can take a screenshot of this episode, upload it to your Insta stories and tag me in it at Designing Vibes. Sending you my love.